Oh, there you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me get Rudy in here. Hold. And okay, there we go. Rudy. Good, y'all. All right, kid. Not too bad. Good. You gonna fill had to make an emergency run to Walmart. Are you gonna fill in the blanks for us? Add toilet paper. <laughs> All right, you're gonna fill in the blanks for us, Rudy? Can you see that? Oh let me get that loaded up. Sun's still out? Huh. Okay. Air fuel ratio is determined on vehicles with electronic fuel injection, which is every vehicle in the last 20 years, mm -hmm. by the what? What controls air fuel ratio? The computer. PCM. That's very correct. PCM, computer, however you want to call it. Engine control module. <coughs> By varying the length of time the injectors are held open. Open. That is correct. Which is called what? Pulse width. Yeah. I made that too small. And pulse width is measured in what? Milliseconds. No well, I mentioned this. Yeah. Uh, getting a lot of noise in here. Um, how many milliseconds are in a second? Thousand. Thousand. Okay. So typically, typically yeah, we would expect you know three to five thousand, uh, three to five milliseconds for the injector to be held open. And that's going to change um, based on a whole bunch of factors like, well, all the stuff I showed you last time with the PCM and stuff, yeah? Okay, so let me just do this, though, so we don't spot. Okay, three catalytic converter oxygen sensor is going to be located in the exhaust manifold. And all it's going to do is report to the PCM how much oxygen there is in the exhaust. And the amount of oxygen left in the exhaust is going to be determined by how complete the combustion was. And how complete the combustion is is going to be determined by how much oxygen is injected, primarily, if everything's correct. So based on what the pre-catalytic converter oxygen sensor reports, the PCM is going to either open the injector for less time or open the injector for more time, depending on whether it showed or lean. Okay. Yeah, yeah. kind of hard to hear you, but yeah, I think I got it. <coughs> yeah, we just got to talk in the background. Yeah, I'm cutting in and out too going on. Yeah. 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 Hey, That's why I come outside. It's quieter. Yeah. Come on, guys. What I tell a lot of people to do is go ahead and hit your own mute and then what the hell? Go ahead and hit your own mute and then oh. you I want to say something, all you have to do is hit the space bar. Maybe I should bring my computer back. See how you are? Okay. I, don't like my, I don't like using my computer that much. Well, you better learn. Post cat hey, oxygen you sensor. Am I good? All it does, all it does is reports... Catalytic converter efficiency. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Mm -hmm. 
So, the way it does that is that the computer is going to be constantly comparing the signals between the pre cat oxygen sensor and the post cat oxygen sensor. And when the computer sees that those two signals are the same, it throws up P420 or P430 because the catalytic converter is not doing anything. If the catalytic converter is working, there should be a significant difference between the catalytic converter, re I mean, the oxygen sensor reading before the cat and the oxygen sensor reading after the cat, right? That just makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. But we were talking about at the time. Bank one and bank two. So let me finish that. All right, that's a V6. But any V engine. I need some T2, please. Drawing does not have to be tremendous. It just has to be clear. All right, I'm coming like this, going about right there. Yeah, there was some issue about uh, putting um, instructional videos on YouTube, but yeah. that's but that's what because you were dealing with children, so. I'm assuming that probably doesn't apply to us. Mm -hmm. I guess I I guess I should, as a matter of policy, say this is being recorded. So if you if that bothers you, do something. I guess. It's fine with me. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah, I hope it's helpful to have this stuff available. Um, hope somebody. I uses think so. It. Yeah, I I I'll use it. Okay. So if you've got a V type engine, you don't have two oxygen sensors anymore. How many do you have? Four. You bet. You got B1 S1. You got B1 S2. And then now you have bank two sensor one and bank two sensor two. two. Yeah, there you go. Now, the reason they do that is in case you got a vacuum leak over here or a bad head gasket or something like that, they don't want to just give you one signal for the whole engine. They want to have, you know, they want to split it up so we can do a more precise job of fuel control. Now, for instance, let's say I had a misfire on this cylinder here. What's a misfire? It's where the cylinder doesn't fire correctly. Or it doesn't fire at all, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say we had a misfire. The cylinder didn't fire at all. So you got all this raw fuel and oxygen coming in, but they're not being combined by the process of combustion. As a result, a whole bunch of oxygen is going to come out. This oxygen sensor isn't smart enough to realize that's what caused all the oxygen. All it's going to do is to report to the PCM that you're running lean. Mm -hmm. And then the PCM is going to say, okay, I'm going to cut down the, I'm going to uh, richen up the fuel then. Which is why you don't want to drive with a, with a misfire in your cylinder because it ends up destroying your cat eventually. Among other problems, but you know, all this raw fuel is going to come into the catalytic converter and just stick it up because the catalytic converter is not equipped to process raw fuel. It's supposed to re it's supposed to process you know tiny vapors, not a bunch of liquid gasoline. And if you've ever seen a catalytic converter that was run a long time with a misfire, it's just completely clogged. It looks like a a, a honeycomb that's been filled with wax. It's a trip to look at. But wouldn't the PCM then take the reading against one to two, and then make its decision on what to do? Yeah, yeah. In fact, I believe that if you stop, well, really, Rudy, now that you bring that up, if I had a misfire, 
on an OBD2 car, what's a computer going to do? It would do a P and the cylinder number. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just put it it'd that way. You throw a P305. Yep. That's correct. Because the computer wouldn't see the speed up it was expecting on uh, the power stroke. Combustion. No, on the power stroke. Yeah. Now, do you, do you guys, not Rudy, but do you guys remember? Um, how does the PCM know how fast the engine is turning? Based on, on the speed sensor? The what? The speed sensor? Which engine speed sensor, sensor or something? Crankshaft speed wheel? sensor. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Crankshaft speed sensor is uh, measuring how fast the crankshaft is turning. And that's one of the reasons why they have, you know, they went from like 16 tooth to like 52 tooth on the crankshaft position sensors because they want to be able to very precisely measure mm -hmm. what's going on so they can be much more sensitive mm -hmm. with misfire detection because misfires are bad. So what happens is, you know, I made that chart for you last time about mm -hmm. the, it says ICPE on the top. And we talked about how the intake stroke is going to slow the crankshaft down and the okay. compression stroke is going to slow it down even more, but the power strokes are going to speed it up. Right. And the exhaust strokes are going to slow it down. Well, the crankshaft's going to be looking for that crankshaft to speed up when the number one five is the the five uh, cylinder is supposed to fire. If it doesn't see that speed up, it's going to it's going to call misfire. That's how misfire detection works on OBD two. So yeah, Rudy, you're right. Um, it is going to throw misfire detection. Oh, that's not. That's not right. It is going to call misfire detection, but before it does that, because you got to remember on some Fords, it might take 10,000 misfires before it calls it. Now, folks, you understand that. Ah. Huh. Someone who's not Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> DTC, what is it? <sighs> Top dead center. No, that's TD. No. <laughs> we were close. It was the right letters. <laughs> no, I'm talking I'm about just, I'm, trouble I'm, code. Just, I'm dyslexic. Okay, um, we do not know. Diagnostic trouble codes. Trouble codes. DTZs. Okay. Yep. Okay, so... Now that's not going to turn on your check engine light at the first failure, right? No. No. What's it going to do? It's going to put up a a check for it to do it again. Yes, and what's that called? Words, the computer's going to look to see if it happens again. I don't think I ever wrote this down, so I'm going to write it down now. So it recognizes a problem or a failure. It's going to do what's called a pending code. Can you guys read that? Yep. Okay. Okay. So the pending code says, all right, I saw this problem once, but I'm not going to freak out about it. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to monitor my systems and see what? If it happens again. Yep. See if it happens again. Good. Now, the pending code will erase if you go long enough without another uh, violation. The idea behind this is because the early computer control systems, mm -hmm. our wiring was terrible, our connectors were terrible, all the stuff was really um, unreliable. So as a result, when you went over a bump in the parking lot, it would throw a diagnostic trouble code. And the manufacturers didn't like it because the customers didn't like it. So what they did was they made the system a little bit more robust by having this pending code. Now, when you go to your scan tool, when you look under codes, it's going to ask you for stored codes and it's going to ask you for pending codes. Stored codes means, yeah, it happened more than once and the computer flagged it. Uh, pending code just means, well, this is probably going to come back up. 
So I could talk about that after this if you want, but I'd really like to finish this. So let me finish this. All right. What are these big things after? Bless you. Jeez. Bless you. What are these big things after the uh, cats? Mufflers. Mufflers. Or resonators. So, Jim, I heard they closed the golf courses. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, what the hell? Not in Orlando. Really? Yeah, well, I, I'm not going to Florida. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't either. Yeah. Okay, what does the muffler do? It just dampens the sound, right? Yep, that's it. Muffler sound. Good. Okay, so I've got water coming out of my muffler when my engine's running. What should I do? Nothing. Mix it with some what scotch. What are you supposed to do? Like yep. I said last week, mix it with scotch. <laughs> yeah, because that is distilled water. Yeah. Now, folks, let me ask you a question. Why is your exhaust system made of stainless steel? Because high well, temperatures? So then, so then rust. Underwater. Rust. High temperatures and all that water, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that water is a is a is a regular byproduct of combustion. You're never gonna get away from it. So let me do that. So you got that? Can I go to the next page? Mm -hmm. Yes. I have a question. What? On your uh, bank one and bank two. Um is it always going to be on bank one on your left side or no. like on Ford's? So, so you can't take for granted that bank one is always on the left side. Exactly. Absolutely. Right, right. And you also can't take for granted that it's going to go one, two, three. On Chevy's, GM's, it'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. But on Ford's, Ford's put the one over here and they go one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So you always got to look that up, right? Mitchell Pro Demand? Or, okay. You know, you could just look that up on the regular internet, but just be careful. Good. Thank you. All right. So you got this? Yeah. Yes, sir. You know what I did this week? Did you as little as what? possible. But you know what I did this week? <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello, hello. See? I got a 43-inch monitor for $159 at uh, oh. Walmart online you know walmart online is way cheaper than uh uh walmart in the store plus they deliver it you know yeah. it's a line with a bunch of sick people right but, that's, yeah, that's get a big good. monitor cheer yourself up you know life's too short you don't to have to win in line take a disabled person with you <laughs> well, it actually worked for me at target target everybody was waiting in line I was like, okay, so uh, what about, oh, he said, well, if you're elderly or you have an underlying condition, I'm like, yeah, I have an underlying condition, hooray. <laughs> and you know, I was going to, yeah, well, I used to. I didn't tell him I used to, but I suppose I still do. So what the hell? Whatever. Don't we all? Craziness. <laughs> you yeah. better tell your A1C drops below five. Below five, well, it's five point wow. last time they checked. Is that Chuck in his garage? Yeah, it was too noisy in the house. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chuck, cool box. get outside. Me and the dog. <laughs> big old toolbox. House. All right. You got this, folks? Yes. Yep. I'll go to the next page if you're, if you're ready. We're ready. Okay. There we go. All right. So, ETC stands for what? Diagnostic trouble code. Diagnostic oh. trouble code. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, when the DTC sets, a couple of things happen. Number one, you're going to get a freeze frame. And is there a sign-in sheet today? Yeah, it should be on the chat. Do you guys see the chat? No, I don't see the chat. No. I don't see. I don't see chat. Uh, I do. You do? 
Uh -huh. There you go. You see that? It's on the bottom. There's the mute button and then the video, then the um no. chat. I see the participation, but I don't see the chat. Yeah. I don't see chat either. Oh okay. wait, I have a more button. I have mine says participant, I think. But yeah, that's what mine ah, says. There we oh, go. there it is. Jim, it's him more. It's him more tonight. Hey, who's Galaxy S ten? Hey, it's me. Oh, okay. Well, we'll do something about that. Jim. Oh, crap. Yes, sir. It's in the more button tonight. Was that a what? When you hit the more, it pops up chat. Then you can type in. I see it right there. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. So I actually told Andrew Heeks and Tony Tinnus personally to be here, and they ain't here. That's annoying. I guess I gotta call everybody. Oh, so can someone get on Electube? I did. Call for you. There we go. Would let me. did. Let me ask you a question while I've got you guys here. Mm -hmm. I'll go to here. And then I go here, and then I go there. Ah! Hey. Hey, now folks, look at your email address and tell me if there's something wrong with it because I've already found one. Jerry's was wrong. Mine's right. Mine's good. Mine's good. Right? Mine is good. Okay, write in the chat if you've got a problem with your email address, please, or the phone number. Okay. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. Mine's not even on there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my phone number's wrong. God damn, Jim, not. Okay, can you type it in the chat, please? Yeah. See yeah, how you are. Real well, clip. I'll that. just text it to you. Oh, there's two pages. Oops. What the hell? Yeah, why don't you text it to me? Yeah, I'll text it to you. Okay. All right. Wow, I must be very popular. There's two pages. Come on now. All right. Let's go here. Huh. All right. So, let me go back then to where we were. There we go. Okay. So what the freeze frame is going to do is it's going to show you a minimum data set that was occurring at the point of failure so that you can know something about what was going on with the engine before when the big problems happened. So for instance, Okay, roll up. Did you get it? Yeah, I just got it. Thanks. Okay. Um, it's going to say ECT, which is what? Uh, ECT? Yeah. Engine. Engine temperature. Temperature. Yeah. Uh, that's right. And it's going to tell you that PPS was at 17%. It's going to tell you that the oxygen sensor was at 450 millivolts. It's going to tell you that the VSS was at 17 miles per hour. What's VSS? Vehicle speed sensor. sensor. Yeah. There you go. It's going to tell you that the mass airflow sensor was at three grams per second. Just stuff like that. Okay. And that's going to help you uh, with uh, an idea of um, how to fix this problem. That's the whole idea behind the freeze frame. So that's telling me that the engine was warmed up and the air happened when you're barely starting out at low speed. Yep. Oh, I forgot to tell you that. RPM. No, oh, RPM. RPM is going to be at, say, 1800. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's pretty low for 17 miles an hour. Well, not my car. <laughs> yeah. But see, what it's going to do is, you know, a lot of times you'll be throwing codes when you uh, start up the car, for instance. And it's important to know that so that you can, uh, you know, because a lot of times cars will will throw a code and then they'll never throw a code when the engine's running already. It just throws a code to start with. So, anyways, that's it's a cold that. code. What else is it going to do besides the freeze frame? It's also going to give you the full data set, too. No. No. No, it just gives you freeze frame. It's a minimum data set. It's about 15, 15 pids long. What it's going to do is it's going to turn on. Your check engine light. Yep. It's also going to tell you what the code was and basic information on it. Yeah, but let's go one step at a time. Now, your check engine light is going to say service engine soon. It's going to say check engine. It's going to say it's going to give you a picture of an engine. It's going to show up on your dashboard, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What color is it? Orange. Orange. Good. That is correct. Okay. Uh-huh. Now, there's two types of check engine lights. There's the solid, mm -hmm. which means, yeah, you got a problem. But there's and also there's the flashing. The, there's a blinking one. Yeah. yeah. The blinking one means right? pull over and shut your car off. Shut the car off. Danger of imminent. Hey, Rudy, you know what imminent means? Like right Guaranteed. now. Guaranteed. Yeah. Imminent engine Dim. or catalytic damage. Damage. Hey, Rudy, you got to connect on catalytic converters? I just got the muffler shot. OK, what's going on with these universal converters versus the specific converters? Universal converters, you got to make sure they're California legal. Right. And they don't always fit every car exactly. Yeah, because since this is a 454, it does have big exhaust. I was thinking I probably couldn't get a universal converter anyway. But it is a 99, so you probably can. Hmm. You just, what you need to do is you need to check and see if it's a header mount. Or if it's a downpipe. Oh, that would require me getting on the ground, though, right? No. Nope. <laughs> I could use a nope. mirror, I suppose. All you got to do is look inside the engine bay. If the yeah. catalytic converter is mounted right at the header, then you right. have to go vehicle specific. If it's, like, down the pipe some, yeah. you can yeah. run a universal. Okay, it's down the pipe. Then you can run a universal, because that's what I did on mine. How much is that going to cost me? Like 20 bucks? Uh, text me the info and I'll call my boy tomorrow. Oh, cool. Thank you. All right. So if the check engine light is flashing, that, that one only has two cats, right? Not three? Uh, I believe it's two. Because mine had three. Your what? My Suburban. Really? Yeah, it had the two, and then when the pipe joined to one, it had another cat. Well, yeah, but you had the small engine, though, right? I had the 350, but... That goddamn jackass on my smog certificate, he wrote that it had a 350 engine. <laughs> Hope that doesn't cause problems. You know the DMV's closed, and the trip... Are all the auto clubs closed now? Yes. Oh, they are, huh? Yeah, and DMV is too. Hey, did I tell you I got rid of the F-250? <laughs> no, I needed the stereo out of it. Oh, yeah, well, I suppose it's gone to a good home. There's lots of stereos in this world. You know, Walmart is the place for stereos. Walmart online, you get whatever you need. 
While we're on the topic of stereos, it seems like I assigned someone to get a stereo for my Corvette about, uh, what was that, six months ago? And uh, I haven't been able to get a hold of my guy to get the right kit for you to keep your chime. Now, if you don't care about losing your chime, I can get you the kit really quick. But yeah. he's trying to find the one that keeps your chime. Yeah, but it's on the whatever website. What website? say charm? The yeah. chime. In oh, chime. Ding, I thought you said ding, 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 ding. No, it's in order to keep you from changing out the factory stereo, they put a bunch of features in it that would ordinarily not be in the stereo. So like on my 2008, if I pulled the stereo, then it wouldn't chime when the headlights were left on or when the door was left open or the keys were left in the ignition. So that kind of sucks. Oh, what the hell. Um, you also need the one for OnStar too. You need the kit for OnStar to keep your OnStar active. Uh, what if I don't want to keep the OnStar active? Well, when you crash, you won't be able to get the call through to get emergency services to you. I would never crash. Speaking of speaking of crashing, did you see that picture of that guy that had his C8 Corvette for less than 24 hours, and some drunk driver jackass pulled out in front of him and he freaking <laughs> it? Did it really yeah. sucks. Yeah. There's a whole YouTube video on it. Right. Right. That blows. Yeah, it's like where where are you gonna get another one of those? I don't think there's many uh used parts in the in the down in the pipeline. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. <laughs> okay, so two of these solid and flashing. If it's flashing, pull over. If it's solid, you got a problem, drive around and you know, find a solution somewhere <laughs> to the shop, right? Now mind yeah. you, not putting your gas cap on right or tight can also throw a check engine light. Yes, yeah. it will. P0456 or P0440. Yeah. Yeah, mine, mine came on. Mine came on. I, I got a knock sensor. That's uh, what I wanted to ask about. Oh, so Michelle, how's your uh, how's your um, $10,000 truck? Uh, it's running fine. <laughs> good. No more smoke. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, you gotta have, you gotta have a vehicle if you want to get to work. Should be over there for the couch. Just the way of it. Okay, so yeah. if it's flashing, there's danger of, of imminent or converter damage. Either okay. one is bad, so don't be that don't be that person. Um, and then so I guess we could say one, two, three, four is gonna be set a d t c okay so once your computer is set a d t c it is in there waiting for you to access it how do you access it scan tool scan tool is correct. scanner in fact tony hit me up to use uh, my scan tool and then i replied to make sure to be here tonight I don't know. I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. If we want the principal, see, because the principal said a long time ago that he is not a, he is not adverse. This is a quote out of his mouth. He is not adverse to makeup sessions. Right? So if we want to have six or so makeup sessions, like where we would just go in the shop and work for six times three is 18 hours. If we want that, we're going to have to show participation, right? Like mm -hmm. the whole class has to like not abandon ship. You know, plus if you guys want a refund, you better be here so that you can complain about it, you know? And and I realize it doesn't make any sense to say this to you cuz you guys are already here, but you know, everybody knows people, right? Okay, so it sets a DTC. Now, Here's the thing. ETC may extinguish. What does that mean? Put out. 
yeah, it may go away. If huh, enough drive cycles. Yeah, well, actually, they're called key cycles. Occur without happening again. Reoccurring issue. Re that's the word I was looking for. Reoccurring. Yep. I used to have this problem because I would go, well, if you know what it was, is that white explorer, Rudy. Every yeah. time I would go up uh, Kellogg Hill, I would get a check engine light. And then as soon as I got over the hill, it would go away. Now, it was a load issue. What say what? Hey, Rudy. It was a load issue. Yes. So, how much you want to bet that that code was a P0171 or P0174 lean exhaust? Probably. Yeah. Bad fuel filter. Or weak yep. fuel filter. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So. <clears throat> Sometimes you'll set a DCC and sometimes it'll go away, but it'll only go away if it doesn't see the problem again. Now, on your scan tool. But you, even if the light shuts off, the computer retains the code until you clear it. Right. But, let's get this. But it's going to be a history code or stored. That means it happened, but isn't fixed happening now. Hey, I got that same kind of chair just in black. What? The chair hanging in his garage. Oh, quack. I have the same kind of chair, but mine's black. I'm afraid. <laughs> no, mine's from Walmart. Yeah. Six hundred pounds. Um, an active code. What does that mean? That means event. It's happening yeah. now. Hey, current event. Yep. I can put this like this. Maybe it might make it easier for you. Now, here's the thing. If it doesn't turn on the check engine light, I guess you'll never know what happened. So that's why a lot of times you can put in a scan tool and you can find out that you had a whole bunch of problems that you weren't even aware of. Yeah. Okay, you got this page? Yep. Yeah. All right, thank you. How you guys doing? Good. Okay. Okay. Good. So glad you're here. Me too. This is this is the only teaching I get to do. Yeah, I finally <laughs> I finally got I finally got something to do this week. What? Got a class. Finally got something to do this week. Besides <laughs> <laughs> so sitting around at home and going to the refrigerator all day. Oh, I yeah. know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you're not be able to go out on sales calls, are you? I mean, there's no. got to be no. no demand. No, I'm. Are you kidding me? I'm not going out. Nope. Yeah, no. Good, Plus, it's yeah. raining. You know. Yep. I've been out as about all day today. All right. Let's see. You want to talk about monitors? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Monitors. Monitor says that the computer is checking its systems. Which is cool. That's one of the things we want a computer for, right? Mm -hmm. So computer checking its systems. Now there's two types of monitors. Rudy, what are the two types of monitors? Uh, 
active and nope on board right nope oh. when it's cold and when it's warmed up nope <laughs> okay two types of monitors what are they continuous non-continuous continuous and non-continuous exactly see there you go Good answer see it's right there so, there's two types of monitors because the computer doesn't want to be testing stuff all the time i mean you know there's for one thing there's really no point with a lot of these systems there's no point to testing them all the time number two it takes a lot of computer power to be testing stuff all the time and continuously stuff, right mm -hmm. for instance you want to tell your kid at the beginning of the school year okay do your homework and whatever you're assigned and then at the end of the year you want to say hooray thank you so good right continuous monitoring means that you have to be on your kid all the time to do the homework that's no fun yeah. for anyone yeah i mean it's a whole lot of work right yeah so, the continuous monitors are only monitors that are really really important really really important like oxygen and this fire stuff that we need to be checking all the time so that's why it's a continuous monitor no matter what you're doing it's always going to be checking that now the non-continuous monitors are going to be like evap um air injection what ignition. else what's it what ignition Nope, that's not a monitor. Um, O2 sensors. Well, probably O2 heater. What about the tire pressure? Is that a monitor? That, Maybe, that's a monitor no. right? This is all engine. This is all engine. Oh, oh okay. And coolant temp. Right there. It's all engine. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I don't go too far because I forgot, but you know, I suppose I should know. Anyways, the important thing is, let me cross this out because I'm not crystal clear sure on that. Oh, cat. Now, here's the thing. The continuous monitors, no matter what you're doing, going uphill, going downhill, going fast, going slow, idle, or 6,000 RPM, the continuous monitors are always running. But the non-continuous monitors are not. And that's a problem because, especially like on the 99 Suburban, it's super, super finicky. And that means that you have to have certain things going on in order for it to run the monitor. And those things are called Enable criteria. And those are conditions that must be satisfied to get the monitor. To run. To run, yep. Catalytic is a non uh, continuous. Right, that's why I put it there. Now, that's the problem. Because on, on the 99 Suburban, it's really, really finicky. And I'm going to show you what it takes to get this thing to run the monitors, and you ain't going to like it. Now, why do we care about running the monitors anyway? To make sure it's clean to pass smog. Yeah, the primary reason we need these thing, these monitors to run is because they won't smog your car mm -hmm. unless your monitors have run. Now, depending on year, ah, you can only have one or two monitors incomplete. What does a monitor incomplete mean? It hasn't ran its drive cycle. Good. Depending on the year, you can only have one or two monitors incomplete. I don't think that's right anymore. 
I think they changed that rule. Uh, maybe. Uh, it's probably right in different states, though. Include to get in. Well, because we're in the South Coast Air Quality Management District, it's probably different, you know, like up north. Test. That's why we care about monitors. That's the primary reason we want to care about monitors. Um, is because we can't get the car smog without them. Now, mechanics care about monitors because it's the only way to prove that whatever you did fixed the car. Does that make sense? If I replace yep. a catalytic converter, I'm going to have to run the monitor in order to find out if the catalytic converter is working. True? No. True. Okay. Let me show you something really, really dumb. Did you get that? Hey, real clear. Uh, what? I, I got one for you. My catalytic converter ran its uh, monitor and pass, but yet my truck still failed smog. Yeah, that happens a lot because the the parameters of what it takes to pass the PCM test are much broader than what the uh, um, the smog uh, test uh, will accept. Yeah, because I only had half a cat left. Right. Right. I had just enough cat to cover the OBD2 sensor. Right. But not enough to actually pass emissions. Right. Okay, let me show you something. Thomas. Go over here. Go over there. And I'm going to go to 1999 suburban duck, duck, go, right? Drive cycle. In fact, this is such a problem that now these smog places are going ahead and showing you how to do it. Well, this is one way to do it. Okay, look, in order to get this thing to done, in order to get this thing to satisfy all the enabled criteria and basically create what's called a uh, perform what's actually called a drive cycle, this is what you have to do. Can you see this? No, part of it. Can you see yeah. this list? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is what you have to do to get this thing to run all the monitors. It says, A, begin from a cold start with the ignition in the off position for at least one hour. Make sure the fuel tank's between a quarter and three quarter full. Engine coolant temperature must be below 122 degrees Fahrenheit and within 11 degrees Fahrenheit of the uh, ambient air temperature. Don't leave the key on prior to the cold start or the heated oxygen sensor diagnostic may not run. Two. Then you have to run, do not drive, for two and a half minutes with the air conditioner on and the rear defroster on. Then it will run the oxygen sensor heater self-test. Ah, I was right. The air injection system passive air test and the evap purge no flow test and misfire detection. Okay, so C, accelerate. Turn off the air conditioner and the rear defroster and begin driving your Suburban as soon as, the, as possible. Apply half throttle until 55 miles an hour is reached. Where the hell are you going to do this? <laughs> yeah, right? Now it's going to run self-tests on the misfire detection, fuel trim. Fuel trim is a continuous monitor. Sorry. OK. And EVAP purge flow. OK, then you're supposed to stay at 55 miles an hour. I'll bet you the people on the freeway aren't going to be too happy with you about that. No. <laughs> then it's going to run the oxygen sensor monitor, the air monitor, the EGR, EGR monitor is a non-continuous sorry put that on your non-continuous list and fuel trim then you're supposed to decelerate slowly let off the accelerator pedal do not brake or shift in order to slow down you have to let the suburban coast until slowing down to 20 miles an hour then it'll self-test the egr system the evap and the long-term fuel trims then you're supposed to accelerate again at three-quarter throttle until 55 miles an hour is reached then you're supposed to hold the steady speed for five minutes. How the hell are you going to stay at 55 miles an hour for five minutes? Yeah. God damn it. And then you decelerate. 
this is awesome. That ends the time <laughs> cycle. Just yeah, that's a little complicated. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, yeah, it's super complicated, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So then it, it gives you a list of, well, that's actually really useful. It gives you a list of how to run each monitor independently. That's freaking cool. I don't have to save that website. All right, the things you discover. But you guys can see that list, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to come over here to this. I'm going to come over here to that. And that is what your list should look like now. It's got cat and GR here, and it's got fuel trim over there. Sorry about that. So, satisfying. Enable criteria constitute a drive cycle. Hmm. Uh, I would say no. Everyone send me the smog papers. Hey, Tomas, if you, what the hell? If you guys yes, have any yes. problem with smog, I need to see the papers. Oh, okay. 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 It's getting a little chilly. Okay. Now, the drive cycle. The drive cycle has been bothering everyone for a long time because different models of cars will have the same, different models with the same manufacturer will have different drive cycles. Different engines will have different drive cycles. Different manufacturers will have different drive cycles. And, you know, if you look at that list, I mean, it, it could conceivably take you an hour to run it. Or more. Yeah. I mean, you would have to charge diagnostic time for that. But, you know, is your customer really going to go for another $100 for you to drive around for an hour? Besides, is that really how you want to spend your hour? No, probably not. No. Yeah. So that's, that's the drive cycle is being a problem, you know, and it's been a problem for 15 years. Well, obviously, since the Suburban's 21, it's been a problem for 21 years. Now, longer than that. Yep. It's been yeah. an issue since 96. But now, see, yeah, but yeah, exactly. True. Um, but see, the problem I'm having with Suburban now is it's not running like three or four monitors. And one of the problems you can have is if it fails one, or something screw with the oxygen sensor or something like that, it won't run the monitor and it won't tell you why. It ain't it ain't quite as easy to be a mechanic as people think, right? People think if it's you're hard. Yeah, people think it's you're too dumb to do it. Dodge, I had to have the computer reprogrammed by Dodge. Right. Yeah. Okay. I so, had to go in and reprogram the ECU on my Dodge. Right. Everybody got this? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay. Let me just finish this off by saying it's okay if one doesn't run. I had a 2000 Ford Mustang with the V6, and the only time it ever ran, you know, I had it for probably a year and a half. And it only ran the evap monitor. It only ran the evap monitor once. And guess what? It happened. Threw a code when it did. Yeah, it failed. <laughs> oh, and you know, and it only happened because I was driving on the freeway. Because, like I said, if you looked at that list, if you're going 70 miles an hour, or if you're going 65, I'll bet. You know, you got to be very close to that 55. I think if you're going 65, it's not going to run the monitor. So, and then you have the opposite, like my flex, as long as you drive it 50 miles continuous, it'll run everything. Right. Well, yeah, but what year is that? 12. <clears throat> That's why, yeah. 
my Dodge does the same thing. <clears throat> really? Yeah, as long as I run it 50, over 50 miles at a, at a steady, continuous pace, it'll run all the monitors. Huh. That's cool. Okay, everybody got this? But you can't be flooring it and racing it the whole time. Right. You mean that truck will actually run for 50 miles? Shit, that truck just drove back from Montana, buddy. It drove a hell of a lot more than 50. Jeez. What kind of mileage are you getting in that sweet, sweet ride? It's terrible. I'll bet. It's got to be murderous. You know, that Suburban's getting like six miles a gallon. I'm I'm getting probably not, mm, I don't know. I got 208 to the last tank, and it took 22 gallons to fill it back up. So about eight. No, no so, so, so far, I've gotten three weeks to a gallon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I discovered on the Suburban is that someone had put a 180-degree thermostat in it, instead of the 195 it was supposed to have and as a result it would never warm up and if you look deeply into the enable criteria for running a bunch of those monitors the coolant temperature has to be at least 194. so as a result since they changed the thermostat it wouldn't run any of the monitors and the guy who sold me that knew it for a fact <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Rudy, did I ever tell you about buying uh, vehicles long way from home? Yeah, not to. Because <laughs> you've guaranteed you're buying it. Now, I wouldn't violate my own rules and pay for it, would I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Continuously. <laughs> yeah. Because I was driving down the hill from his over and over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah, and every time, yeah, it's a slow lunar, right? So I was coming down the hill from Hesperia, and all of a sudden the check <laughs> is on. Catalytic wow. converter code. Oh, okay. That's okay, huh? Yep. All right. So I, I like give you five hundred dollars for that suburban right now. For the wheels? Okay. No, for the whole truck right now. <laughs> yes. Oh, for the for the third row seat? Okay, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we were talking in Zoom earlier this this morning about what scan tool to buy. And I like the Kaizi a lot. But the problem is that? Pardon? How do you spell that? Can you see this paper? Mm, no. <laughs> Which one did I get? A Y Z E E. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I get them off of Amazon, but the problem is, guess how long it takes to get it now? A month. Yeah, it's like April thirtieth. Wow. Months. Yeah. I like it though. Yeah. Now, uh, the kid I was talking to, his grandfather, got this uh, Harbor Freight scan tool, which was way more expensive, and it wasn't as nice. I mean, it how much is that one? They like. Pardon? How much is that one? The Casey one. Uh, it's like sixty-five dollars. Cheap. Okay. Yeah, I I bought one, Dave. It was like yeah. sixty-five, seventy bucks. Right, right. So, oh, someone's actually got a real desk. I got a fold-out table. Used to take out to the desert. Don't feel bad. I got a I got a fold-up table too. Yep. All right. Eric? What I look for in a scan tool. Well, number one, it's going to be a code reader, and it's going to read codes, but I would not buy a code reader. I think it's a waste of time. I mean, if you buy a code reader, basically you're buying 75% of what a good scan tool would give you, and, uh, you know, a code reader is just going to tell you the code, and that's not going to help you get it fixed. So, number one, it's going to be a code reader. Number two, I want to have live data on it. So live data is going to say, you know, oxygen sensor, one, eight, seven millivolts, um, ECT, one, eight, seven degrees. That's live data. Code reader is just going to give you, you know, P0134. 
think that's a mass airflow sensor or something. Number three, I want it to have monitors. Sometimes they call that I am status. I think that's it, inspection and maintenance. <coughs> hey, Rowcliffe. What? The, the big computer we have at school. Big scan tool? Yeah, the big scan tools. Yeah. Can those do airbag? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Because somebody was asking me about airbags and stuff, and I told them I didn't know if my scanner could do. No, it was ABS. Yeah. See, a lot of times on a scan tool, ABS and supplemental restraint system are going to be separate options. A lot of them aren't going to do this. And if, you know, see, well, I'll show you. You ready? Mm -hmm. Come on. Go to this. Go to this. And we go to Harbor Freight. Hey, my favorite store. Um, I don't really like their new line of scan tools. I think it's overpriced, but it's good. It's good for a lesson. Here's the one I have. Here's a code reader right here. What say what? There's the one I have, the, the gray one. This one down here? No, the I think it's a forty-four ninety-nine. Oh, okay. Oh no. Yeah. Now no, wait, it's see, the one twenty-nine ninety-nine. Is mine will do yes. Yeah, now this one is just a code reader. This one has codes plus monitors. See this thing up here? That's mm -hmm. monitor. See monitor status? Green means it's been tested and passed. What does red mean? It hasn't red passed. No, red means it's tested and failed. Oh. oh. <laughs> Coronavirus. Um <laughs> so yellow means it hasn't been tested yet okay um that's the next thing in my notes so you'll notice that this is a code reader just does codes this does codes and monitors this does codes monitors and live data this does codes monitors live data and it has abs this has codes data monitors and abs and airbags and i have that one do you yeah. I'll go to your house then. It's uh, too sensitive. What do you mean? It always shows up with those red lights. You know, there's always something wrong. Really? Yeah. Huh. Hmm. That's weird. That's why I switched back to the Altel because uh, it was more forgiving. That one there is always, always detecting something. You know what I mean? If you go really? by that, your car will never pass smog. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I like the I like the Kaisies and I think Kaisy hey, and let me are the same. My flex over. Let's see how sensitive it is. <laughs> I brought it to class one time. Do you think they're gonna release us at the end of the month? Nope. Gosh well, darn it. Well, you realize, you know, do you know how many people have been killed by coronavirus in Southern California? Less than three hundred. That is totally yeah. wrong. Yeah. And we got like 20 million people here. Okay, okay, but you gotta realize now they're counting. If 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 I get hit by a bus and killed, if I got run over by a bus and I had COVID, they put it as a COVID death. So our stats no, are don't. Right now. They fit, they fixed that one teenager who had the virus and died. They yeah. said it was not uh corona that killed him. Yeah. I don't know. I hope no, there there is I think 400 in Southern California. Well, there's what, 20 million people in Southern California? Yeah, I something like that. Uh, as long as not you, right? I heard it was more than 1,500. You know, there's a whole lot of people all over this country where there's like been no coronavirus in their whole county. So it's like, why are they forced to stay home? 
anyway, that's what it's 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 very very contagious. And now what they're finding out is that it invades your brain too. So now the virus is figuring out, hey, I can go all anywhere I want in this body. So they're taking over their brain cells now. Yeah. So it's getting yeah. a lot worse. So and your heart. That's why people need to stay home because it's very very scary what it's doing yeah, to and people. Your- yeah, and we're, talking, it's causing we're people. talking at least six more months before we're done with this. Uh, be- if ever. <laughs> no way. Yeah. The economy can't take it. Jim will look- uh, the economy can't, but I mean, we're going to have to deal with this coronavirus thing for a while, yes. Well, put it this way. I, I, I'll i bet you Jim's not making income if he, you know, the people that own businesses are getting trashed by this. I know, it's sad. But they can now apply for unemployment. Well, what's four hundred and fifty dollars a week gonna do for you? Not much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd get me I would lose everything. Yeah. So, anyways, the point I was trying to make was that that code reader, live data, monitors. Now this is gonna be extra. And you know if if all you're trying to do is get your car smogged or if all you're trying to do is do engine management, I wouldn't even bother getting this because one of the problems with getting a cheap scan tool that does ABS and SRS is all it's going to do is give you codes. It might give you data, but I don't know. Uh, Chuck, does yours give you uh, ABS data? It tells you the code, but doesn't tell you what wheel it is. That's the problem. Oh, hell no. Really? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Right. Then you gotta probably get another school, another tool, and then plug into it and uh, spin the wheel and see if you get, you know, some right. kind of signal from right. the, you know. So that's another tool altogether. Yeah, that was my suspicion. That's why I was wary about stuff like that. I've never been. I got. I've had a couple of the cheap ABS scan tools, and I've never been impressed. It's never really helped me. When we get to school, I want to put my truck up and check the ABS. Okay. Well, Rudy, okay. What, when do you think when do you think that's going to happen, Rudy? Six months. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. June. I'll bet you June. I bet you more like July or August. Mm. Well, insane. you know, I took this job at Montclair High School, and then I actually this was before I had walked into the shop, and then I walk in the shop, I'm like, this place is air conditioned. <laughs> amazing it's just freaking amazing yeah we got all the we've been in so many bays that worked yeah well we've come a long way man come a long way we'll just keep coming from east la's ghetto ass yeah bay. one greasy lift one greasy 50 year old lift yeah okay so the fifth thing you want to look for in a scan tool is active tests, sometimes called functional tests. And that will mean things like, you know, turn on fans and change idle speed. Hey, Rola, you got any more of your OBD1 scan tools? Actually, I do. Why do you ask? One for one. You what, what? How much for one? Oh, man. See, the problem is I have an MT2500, but it's in a custom color, you know, the green color that 55 uh, Chevys used to come in. I could. Well, I don't want your special one. I, I said it was just one of the red ones. Yeah. Yeah, I could probably get you that one, but. I just, I just need an OBD1 for the Taurus. Okay, if it's only for one vehicle, well, why don't you just borrow it, man? Don't get a whole scan tool. Well, I own the car. I might as well have it so I can use it and stuff. Speaking of which, did you sell the Cobra yet? Nope. Homeboy was supposed to come look at it on Wednesday and didn't show up. Yeah, they've been doing that a lot with my Corvettes lately. Saying, oh, yeah. Oh, incidentally, you know what time it is, kids? It is 741. You want to take a 15-minute break? Yeah. Okay. All right. See you at eight. Okay. Yep. Thanks, guys. Bye right, bye. Uh, hi, precious miss. What are you doing, girl? What are you doing, baby? Oh. What time are we coming back? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Yeah. Eight o'clock. It'll be four. Yeah. 
Okay, eight o'clock. The virus itself may last only two more weeks or so, but the faction known as the Democrat Party will continue to make it last psychologically for at least six more months. Their motivation is to thoroughly ruin the economy and blame our great president Trump for it. They are trying to stop his inevitable re-election by any surreptitious means possible. It is well known that people who do not suffer from TPS are too smart for this hoax and will not allow it to go beyond four more weeks. The lazy Americans with TPS will continue to milk the government for more money and time off from what is keeping it with being their sugar daddy. We can agree that not longer than four to six weeks in America will be back online. <laughs> And you might want to give me your card. Your best buy card so I can trade.